Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about randomization in LabVanced. So what I've done here is I have a study that's pretty well set up. Um, I've got tons of different tasks here that just need to be assigned to my blocks and sessions and groups. So to start, let's talk about how you can balance things so that some subjects see the study one way and some subjects see it another way. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my blocks using these tasks. So to start, um, I need to have my intro task, which I want everyone to see. And then let's go ahead and put in our experimental task and our finishing task. So to do that, I just click Add Task here. And I'm going to go ahead and add all of them right now. OK, so this is a block that contains all of the experimental tasks aside from the introduction and conclusion of my study. If I wanted to randomize the order of every single task in this block, I could do that in the settings here and just click random permuted across subjects. However, because this block does include the intro and the finish, I don't want to randomize them all because some subjects may see all of their experiment before the introduction. So the way I can do that if I've contained everything in one block is by using a randomization separator. All I do is I add two of these and I drag them so that all of the things included within the two lines, or the separators, are what's going to be randomized. So every subject getting this block will see the introduction, a random order of these tasks, and the conclusion in this exact configuration. The other way I can do this is to set up one block for the introduction, one block for the tasks, and one block for the conclusion. Um, that is an older way of doing it, but you can definitely do it, and I'll show you how right here. So I would just add a block specifically for the intro, add another block here, and just put all of my experimental tasks in, and then add a block that's just the finish. And then what I can do is go in the settings of this block 3 and click random permuted across subjects. So you can do it that way as well. Um, but the simpler way, if you're going to be giving the same block to every participant but want the order randomized, is to go ahead and do the separators. However, given this randomization, there's no telling how many subjects are going to get, you know, choose the pet first or task three first. So let's talk about how you can go ahead and make sure that your subjects are going to be getting um, the same number of subjects for each randomized condition. The way I can do that is have an intro block, have my experimental block here, and my finish block, but we're actually going to create a few different versions of this block three. To simplify, I'm just gonna delete this task four here. So let's say I only have three tasks. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy this block three, and all I'm going to do is just switch the order of the tasks manually. This is just one way of doing it. So let's say I go like this. So now I have three different versions of my experimental block where the tasks are appearing in a different order. All I have to do is create my sessions and my groups. So for each session, I want to add block two, which is my introduction block, one of the versions of block three, and block four. Block four is my finish. So now I'm gonna create another session and again do block two. This time I'll do that second version of block three and then block four. And we'll do a third session with block two, the last version of block three and block four. So now I have three different sessions, each of which is going to have a different version of the order of the experimental tasks. So then for each session, I'm going to create a different group. Okay. So now what we have is three groups, which the participants can be assigned to either completely randomly or in a specific way, which I'll show you right now. So to determine how many participants are going to end up in each group, let's go ahead and go over to the study settings tab. Under the startup and main settings, we're going to scroll down and talk about our between subject balancing. As you can see in this description, we automatically assign new subjects to the group with the lowest subject count. 
So what you can control as the researcher is when that subject count increases. Our first option here is that the subject count will increase only for subjects that have already completed at least one recording session or that have just recently started. This is recommended for most cases um, because what it's going to do is it's going to exclude subjects who didn't finish the study in time from the count. We also have this option that increases the subject counter regardless, it's either complete, incomplete, or ongoing. The problem is this is going to include incomplete data sets. So you may have a group with five people, but only four of them completely finish the study. Finally, we have this option for increasing the subject count for only subjects that have already completed at least one session. So they've completely completed it. However, it can lead to unbalanced data if, say, three people join at the same time. So this is recommended um, to be done in multiple batches to ensure that you have balanced data. So I'm gonna click this, um, this recommended option, and then I can actually set the duration of when subjects are going to be marked as incomplete. So let's say if this study takes them more than 30 minutes, they're incomplete and they're not gonna be part of my subject count. So I can click save. And we'll go back to the study design. And that's one way of figuring out how many subjects you're going to get in each of these sessions with these different orders. So this is between subject balancing. Let's talk about within subject balancing. So I'm going to open up this task. So this task um, is actually built from the trial system video. So if you haven't watched that video, um, please go watch that. That explains the trials and conditions and the factor tree. For this video, I'm just going to explain the randomization menu in a little bit more detail. So this is a great way of looking at how your study is already randomized by default and what changes you can make to get it to your specifications. First, let's talk about trial order. Remember that in LabVanced, by default, everything is as random as we can make it. So all the settings are going to start off as random, except for these factors, which will start off as fixed unless you've changed them. So by default, the trial order is going to be random. But you can also change it to be fixed by design, which is the fixed order that you've defined, fixed by hand, which is where you can set the fixed trial order if it's different from the one in the editor, which would be down here in this window, dynamic, which means that you are going to build some events that are going to change the trial sequence, or you can upload a trial sequence yourself using a CSV file. We can also change the condition order from random to blockwise, and add some constraints with that randomization. So let's say I change it to blockwise. As you can see, things jumped a little bit around here. The constraint, um, we can limit the number of successive repetitions from the same condition, which can be pretty helpful. Factor randomization is a little bit more complex, and that's because depending on um, what factor you created and how you created it determines if it's fixed or random. Again, um, please see that other video for this or the text documentation. But you see that there are lots of options. You can balance the different factors within condition groups or unbalance them within condition groups. And some factors can be changed to random, some factors cannot. Um, but when you do change a factor to random, you get a lot more options of if you want it unbalanced within the task or balanced. And you can also balance or unbalance um, factors between subjects and within other factors. So that's a really great way of getting things as random or as fixed as possible. Your other option down here, you can set the number of trials automatically or you can set the number manually. So let's say I've defined, you know, 16 trials. I can change that to say only show five of the trials, which is going to limit what's shown or I can increase it to say 32, where each trial is going to get shown twice, and so on and so forth. Here you can see the number of trial variations and number of shown trials that you have created using your factors. For this study, I created four conditions, I have two factors, and each of those um, has four trial variations. So that's how I got 16, because of the four conditions and the four trials per condition. Over here in the simulation of trial sequence area, you can hit this refresh button as many times as you'd like 
and actually see a simulated trial sequence for one of your subjects. Since I've left everything to be pretty random, we should be seeing sometimes two conditions are presented in a row that are the same. You know, that would be one trial right after the other that I've defined. The subject won't know that, of course. Um, sometimes there's some alternations. It's This is basically the most random situation. But if I say fixed by design, when I hit this refresh, nothing changes because it's going to be presented exactly as I've built it, everything in that order. So this is the randomization settings within just this randomization window up here. There are lots more things you can do with these trials and conditions. And just based on the study design, there are several ways that you can balance um, what subjects are going to see, what type of study that you've built. And of course, everything can be changed at any time. I hope this video was helpful.